On this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast, we talk about how a travel company handled uh, COVID-19 exactly at the moment that they start expanding into a new market. We have a company that starts in Russia, expands into Europe <laughs> right before COVID-19, and now is expanding into the United States. We talk about how they manage that expansion. We talk about the, po about the power of marketing on Telegram, the power of Pinterest referrals, and testing and analyzing data to drive performance. Let's jump right into this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast. Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of Brill Media and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today, our guests are Ivan Bortnikov and Olga Bortnikova, co-founders of YouTravel.me. Uh, YouTravel.me is a, an algorithm-powered online marketplace for booking multi-day small group adventure tours organized by travel experts. Tell us a little bit about your growth. You've been running this company since 2018. Tell us a little bit about what it is and how you've grown it and where, where it started. Yep, sure. Hi, everyone. First of all, Robert, thanks for having us here today. And yeah, we're happy to tell about YouTravel.me. So as, as you just mentioned, we're building a marketplace for small group tour, tours around the world with uh, independent guides. So we really believe that uh, group touring uh, is a little bit outdated and group tours can be same interesting as trip with all friends. So that's why we build a platform where we match people based their, on their interests, uh, values, and so on uh, for uh, their uh, joint experiences and for uh, unbelievable uh, trips in small groups. So we have started it in 2018 and now we have about uh, 200,000 monthly users on our platform. We have started originally in the Eastern Europe and Russia. And after the pandemic, after we have survived, uh, we are now also expanding to the U.S. market. That's why we are so, um, so amazed to be here today. So how does – tell? okay, so the, the fundamental value proposition here is – is what adventure touring tell us about like the tell us what what people are experiencing when they go on one of the tours and then let then let's like backtrack it to how your platform makes it a better experience for for the the traveler yeah let me try to share about uh, my, my vision about that so first of all we help people who don't have time and travel preparations they don't have hours to uh, go to all these booking websites find their hotels uh, guides and so on but more most more importantly we uh, help people who don't have travel companions to join them because uh, that's the problem of getting older the older you become the more difficult it is to find uh, travel companions who want same destinations as you who have the same travel budget as you and so on so that's why our solution is um combining the best unusual tours around the world which are already ready made so you just need to uh prepay to book them and you like you can do it in one sitting and the ready trip uh, is is I mean you have it and um, also you will have it with cool uh, travel mates so you don't need to bother on like asking your friends to join you trying to fit the vacation dates uh, so the people are already there so you just join a small group in a cool company and you just uh, have an amazing experience. That's how it works, basically. Yeah, so, and what's that about uh, people travel because of people? So uh, when um, you feel some like depression or sad, or maybe you have a lot of work and uh, you don't don't know what how to spend some holidays, uh, you can join uh, not just like some tour group, but you can uh, join some uh, really small group of ten or six people who are on a mission of uh, help some uh, small community or animals or just just have adventure some uh, not usual direction and do you feel like traveling 
with the old friends than anything else. So uh, th this is this feeling of uh, community, this feeling of uh, friendship is the the most important in uh, small group touring. Right, and and one of the one of the challenges, you know, I got lucky. I'm married, and my my wife is. We love to travel, and we have the same types of interests in mind. Um, and but we both experience that situation where we really want to do certain types of things, but either our friends can't take the time off, or they don't have the dough, or you know they want to. They, they there's some incompatibility. So this is almost like a way to. To 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 swipe right, I guess. I, I all that dating, all the all the swipe left and swipe Tinder stuff happened right right before. I'm sorry, right after I like met my wife. So I don't actually know how that works. But you swipe right, and you you can find the right people to have the right adventure for that for your interest. Is that fundamentally what's happening here? How how does the algorithm play into that process? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's actually how we, I mean, your story really made me remember how we created this platform because uh, back in 2018, we didn't have friends to join us in our trip to, to China. So we uh, took uh, two of, of our friends with us and we just discovered that we have totally uh, different travel styles. They like to, to have it like relaxed, uh, staying on the beach all the day long. And we are like active guys who want hiking and so on so it, it turned out that we don't have same travel interests but we had to travel together so we are good friends but it doesn't mean we're a good travel company and so that's uh, one of the problems we were trying to solve so basically now the algorithm is uh, is uh, matching people based on their like um how to say interests we mean what you like you uh th they see what th it sees how the like what tours you're searching at the moment, which one you liked. You can also um, give more information about how introversive or extroversive you are, your age, your city, and so on. And you can see who is already joining the trip. So we really believe in human-to-human -human platforms. That's why you can see uh, information about the guide, who's the travel expert, uh, what he loves, uh, what kind of people he, he wants to have in, in, in this trip. But also you can uh, find information about other uh, trip mates, uh, where they're from and what they expect from, from the trip, like their previous experiences. And that's how the algorithm uses all this information to uh, help you choose the, the most suitable trip. So, so Ivan, you're the CMO and co-founder. Olga, you're the CEO and co-founder. How do you divide up the responsibilities within your organization? And I know as a startup, everyone wears every every possible hat, but at least that's the way it's been in, in my organization, at least when we very first started. How do you mm -hmm. divvy up responsibilities? Yeah, uh, actually, we have three co-founders. We have a uh, uh, third co-founder, uh, he's CTO, uh, Chief Tec Technical uh, Officer. And uh, in the beginning, we uh, understood that uh, uh, I have uh, experience in um, uh, in the same position in event management company. So uh, I was um, C C CEO of um, event management company who that organize uh, very big events for some international staff. Uh, and uh, Ivan has experience in sales and in marketing. So uh, it was easy to understand, okay, <laughs> marketing is for you. Uh, uh, some operations and some sales stuff, it's for me. And our third co-founder, uh, he was deputy C CTO is in uh, some agency, some developer agency. And mm. uh, it was really easy because uh, every uh, of us have um, uh, really uh, deep experience in our own way. So mm -hmm. when we uh, launched uh, you travel, it was like, okay, you have this experience, it's for you. Yeah, but now, I mean, uh, Olga, she's more into strategy, uh, all this uh, mm -hmm. like visionary stuff and so on. And I'm more related into like daily operations, day by day conversion rates, uh, bringing more uh, users on the platform. And that's how it works. 
Okay, so you started. So what were the what were your focus countries when you started in 2018? And tell us about the the expansion. And actually, before we even go into that, what I'm really interested to understand is, you know, I'm looking at your site and you have like stuff happening, uh, like a small group tour in the United States, Grand Canyon, Buckskin Gulch, which. I, that sounds like really cool buckskin gulch never been to a gulch <laughs> <laughs> um but like you have these events so is is a lot of is a lot of your responsibility to connect with the actual provider locally and make sure that they're listed on the platform is that fundamentally what's happening here like you guys like if i want to travel you guys aren't planning my trip personally right like tell us about how that part works mm-hmm. yeah Exactly. So we have gathered more than 3,000 travel experts all over the world who create uh, multi-day trips in small groups. And we are basically a platform which connects travelers with these travel experts. Um, and they craft the old experiences. These are local guides. These are professional travelers, some uh, influencers. Uh, maybe they are like uh, thematical experts like yoga teachers or professional photographers and so on. So they create their unusual trips, unique trips around their own experience. And for example, if you are a yoga teacher, you create a yoga retreat for five days and a person just finds uh, find this uh, trip on the platform and uh, and can, can join. Uh, so this is how we work basically. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So, so tell us about where you guys started and and how you've expand like where you've expanded to. Obviously, now I understand you're in the United States. Tell us about your the the how strategically you made decisions about where which countries to expand into. And then I want to understand. So let, let's talk about that first, and we'll talk about how you how you've accomplished that expansion. Yeah, sure. That's that's a great question because we have started uh, originally in 2018 uh, in uh, Russia, where we are from. Uh, we have started from from these markets, but soon we realized that also uh, Russian speakers from all all over the world are interested. So uh, in in 2019, we were in uh, in former USSR countries mostly like all of them uh, people from all of them were using our platform and we have understood that uh, the also in the global market there is no similar product which is like um, which is connecting travelers with like um, people uh, who organize small group tours and I mean independent guides here not the big classical tour operators so we have started to work for the European market uh, back in 2020, we went to Portugal to join one cool travel accelerator for international travel startups um, and started our first expansion in Germany and some other European countries. And what happened? There was a pandemic, which have started right after we uh, did our first, uh, we got our first users there. So our first uh, international expansion was totally failed. We, we returned back to Russia last year year to save our business to save our startup and current markets and since then we have managed to grow even during the pandemic twice last year so we realized that now uh, the US market is developing with the same patterns uh, which happened last year in our uh, previous markets to, so because the country is huge and it's it's so diverse in terms of the activities and places sure. and national parks and all of that so we have understood that now uh, this is the right market to 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 grow and we have started from March to to work here and now already four or five percent of our customers are in the US and we are really growing fast here and of course all the pandemic I mean the situations that with the restrictions which have lifted up recently is booming travel industry here and it's helping us also to to grow much faster than we did in the previous market. So Olga, yeah. you know, uh-huh. go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I wanted to say that uh, it would be argu- uh, difficult to argue that leisure travel is at the center of this pandemic crisis. And uh, according to the World Tourism Organization, international travel fell by 80%. And uh, we 
had doubled in revenue and how we did it uh in the first i think first week uh we just sitting uh we were sitting in home and said oh oh my god what it will be uh oh my god what it will be with our team with our customers it's about a lot of refunds and sure. then we understood that Okay, we uh, if we will just sit in on the sofa and it will be um, unhelpful. So I understood. Okay, we need to uh, to do something, something. And we understood that. Okay, we have a very big community of uh, travel experts. We have more than three thousand travel experts all over the world. So they feel really lonely because it's not a very, very big tour operator, a lot of big team. And uh, this really personal person is in Africa, in Russia, in the US market, and uh, they really feel lonely. And we understood, okay, we need to help them. We uh, didn't think about money first. We thought about how can we help our travel experts to uh, break through this pandemic crisis and uh, what we, uh, we what we can do. And we understood that okay, we can uh, launch uh, the um, course. Uh, this some um, I think ten or um, ten or twelve webinars for. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from our top travel experts on our platform, uh, and we ask them to tell travel experts how to go through the pandemic and how to go through crisis, what mm -hmm. we can do, uh, and uh, how to start some new business when you uh, uh, get fired from some uh, travel companies. And uh, we launched it, and we had understood that there is the unique information and uh, there is no such information in the world because no one works with a travel expert directly somebody works with guides who work with travel experts with tour operators somebody works with uh, some uh, how to build a tour company but uh, for travel experts who for independent guides there is no information and we launched this information and uh, for now, uh, really, people who have more than 100 hours on uh, this uh, platform uh, of webinars, and uh, there is a lot of information for them. And uh, us, I'm sorry, Olga, this, tell us about oh, the uh, webinar. Tell us about that webinar. So was your was your idea in like March or April of 2020 to connect mm -hmm. the various tour operators that you know across the world? And what types of information were you sharing with them? Yeah, uh, it was a webinar about how to launch new business if you want to work in travel industry and uh, what uh, you need to do if you want to <laughs> to be alive through and go through this pandemic. To survive, it's right. About survive, yeah, correct. And uh, it's about uh, a um, financial model, or how to finance all your debts, how to work with refunds and how to work with clients. And uh, what you uh, need to do if you want to launch this uh, travel business and uh, what you need to do if you want to involve people in your idea. And uh, we collect 10 people, uh, 10 top travel experts from our platform and we ask them how they how did they launch and uh, how did they uh, walk through this pandemic and how they uh, really sur survived uh, during the COVID. And they uh, answer on our question. We uh, involve lawyers, we involve accountants, uh, we involve uh, different uh, other people uh, and uh, in different directions. So uh, they understood uh, they have a um, uh, big course for how to be a travel expert. So it helps. It helped us uh, to survive during this uh, really heavy time during the COVID, and uh, it was our first hypothesis. And second was uh, we need to launch uh, internal uh, tourism. So yeah, like we, domestic one. Yeah, domestic. Yeah, uh, and uh, we launch uh, this. Uh, we. 
uh, start to tell in to our travel experts, our globally travel experts uh, community, uh, how to launch uh, different directions. How to if you live, for example, in Russia, how to launch uh, tours in Russia. If you live in uh, some different country, how to uh, launch this domestic travel. And uh, we start working with it and uh, scale our supply, I think, 40 times uh, x, x40, and uh, it works also. So these two hypotheses help us. So, so, the la so, so that's really interesting. So, so a lot of the time you spent last year was to really connect with the, the supply part of your business mm -hmm. to ensure that when, they, when the world economy reopens, you really have a way to um, quickly activate and and have some payoff on the interest of people who want to travel rather than doing something different. And next thing you know, you, you can't even supply the travel that people want to do. Yeah. 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 yeah we're, you're right. We really understood that uh, our travel experts, our suppliers are the biggest asset we have because uh, these are the guys like who bring the customers with their unique product. They are the creators basically uh, of the product. So we need to develop them. We need to help them overcome this crisis. Uh, that's why we really focused on, on them. And that's why we have basically, I think the biggest uh, database of active independent guides for multi-day tours uh, on one platform. That's why also customers come to 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 use our product and platform. So so when you're when you're creating the webinar, how did you or the webinar series? What did you? How did you deal with the language barrier? Like how? Like what languages did you create the webinar in? Like that seems like yeah. a big challenge. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So. So we have created them in Russian and English languages. So uh, as Russian is uh, our uh, na like local, I mean, native language. So we didn't have problems with that. But with the English language, the biggest uh, issue, uh, I mean, the biggest uh, solution is basically not to, I mean, to, um, to attract uh, English speaking travel mm -hmm. guides. Uh, true guys uh, who don't have this barrier. So that's basically how we did it. We tried not to be involved personally on the early stages. Uh, mm -hmm. And and that's how we mostly solved it. So what type of, when, you, when you're looking at marketing in the US, well, let's actually first start with Russia. Like what were the key channels in Russia to grow your business? And then what are, how does that look in the United States? Yeah, that's a that's a great question because we see lots of similarities, but also uh, at the same time, uh, lots of uh, differences in the market channel. So when we started in um, in the Eastern Europe and Russia, the biggest challenge, uh, the biggest channels for us were uh, first of all the search engines, uh, paid ads, and uh, also SEO, um, and. Secondly, the community marketing. So we have created our own uh, communities uh, of travelers uh, in social media, like in Instagram and also in some messengers, which are popular in this market. For example, Telegram is a very popular one um, there. So this is how these two um, channels, uh, two groups of channels basically have helped us to boost like viral effect and to boost some network effect. So the, the users, they interact with each other in communities uh, and, and so on. Uh, here using, in the US. Sorry, yeah, sorry. In, in Russia and, and in Europe, how are you using Telegram? What are you doing with Telegram? Oh, we have our own uh, channel there where we're posting uh, the best offers. We're posting their stories of our travel experts, um, how they have, I don't know, became this, this type of traveler, so digital nomads. And uh, also, so we're talking about small group tours. That's why people tend to try to unite uh, based on their interests, where they want to go in some small groups. So we were boosting it with some events like events about the dream destinations they have like live broadcasts about some country or some i don't know hiking or uh or climbing to some mountains so that's basically 
uh, what we try to, to, to do in these messengers. Uh, and, and to, how are, to so Ivan, how are people yeah. finding your Telegram channel? Oh, yeah, sure. So we are making some um, promotions in other uh, communities in Telegram. So some of them paid, some of them uh, are like cross promotion. This is, this is a very cool and working mechanics in Telegram when uh, for free, uh, you find some uh, channel which is similar to your one in terms of followers, and you just uh, understand that probably the audience is similar. So you just make this cross promotion, and it works sure. really great in Telegram. I, I don't know any other net uh, social network which uh, has it uh, working so well as it as in Telegram. So this is basically how we do it. You know, it's interesting. I think there's a lot like I associate Telegram with um, the crypto community because that's kind of like just how I'm how I yeah. use Telegram. And I also think about it as um, a way to keep in touch with my friends or family that might be in Europe. And so I guess the question really is, do you think Telegram is a, is a viable marketing solution for you in the United States? Or do you think the solution, the, the channels are, are different in the United States? So totally different, uh, the channels, I mean, here uh, versus Russia and Eastern Europe. But I believe that this can be a, like, Mm, gross hacking channel here because uh, like competing in Facebook is really, really expensive uh, in the US, but competing in Telegram could be really cheap because uh, it's, it's really, I mean, not many advertisers there. So it can be a, an opportunity for a startup like ours or for any other startup to get the first users uh, really in a cheap way uh, than just like paying thousands of dollars to Facebook and like Google. So, so Telegram, so Telegram at this point is, are, I don't believe there are ads on Telegram, right? Or they're, they might be in beta or they're coming, right? It's, it's all organic content posting and being, I guess, respectful to the, the channel owners and not stepping on their feet, right? Like that's fundamentally what it is. There's no ads. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're, you're totally right. There is no ads in, the, in Telegram. So the only thing you can do is to buy uh, some ads in other uh, Telegram channels, in other Telegram communities, or trying to bring the audience outside of Telegram into, in, in your channel. So Very that's cool. basically the, the best working mechanics there. So how do you, you know, as we wrap up here, how do you scale this business over the next 12 to six? 12 to 18 months into middle of 2022 into 2023. What are the key initiatives that you focus on to make this business grow? Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, we really uh, believe that the referral program uh, can uh, boost the business here because the product is new and we already see how our customers react when they found, find it. They try to bring their own friends and family to, to use it. So we will put our like efforts on boosting our referral program to give to grants our users uh, some really generous bonuses. And we see that it's also really working well in the US. Uh, as we have a really good expertise in paid uh, channels, we will also uh, continue uh, working uh, with these paid channels. I mean, like uh, Google ads and, and all this stuff. But also I see that travel companies have um, some um, really good results in some more unusual channels that we are also trying to work at now. For example, Pinterest, I think, is a great uh, um, media or net social network for travel industry. So this type of um, channels are, uh, are really something really perspective for us. So we are trying to get hundreds of users and thousands of users from, from all these channels uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. So we already have 10,000 uh, monthly users on the platform who come to our platform. They uh, search for some tours around the US and in other countries. So we need to boost this uh, up to 200K or even more in the next like 12 to 18 months with these channels. 
Yeah, and uh, about the channels, we are truly hustlers and we are worked uh, through the pandemic because we are work hard. And uh, uh, there is one secret that uh, I think uh, everybody needs to know that uh, uh, you need to, to be ready for routine work on hypothesis testing and uh, different channels, different hypotheses, different um, segments of uh, clients. It's really work. Uh, you just uh, do it every day, and uh, for m maybe for us uh, this Pinterest will works, um, maybe not. We don't know exactly, but we will uh, test it, and we as we test a lot of uh, other hypotheses with another challenge ch channels. Olga, I love that because you know, you know, we're we're a marketing and advertising firm, and testing hypotheses is everything that we do, and we use the data, day to day, day to week month, year to really understand who the audience is, what their interests are, which creative performs the best, which products to offer. I mean, we see that with the largest brands in the world. We see that with the clients that we serve. How can, um, so tell us just briefly, how can people, how can people find you and uh, if they want to travel with, with you or through your platform? Yeah, so our website is youtravel.me and we're also in social media like in Instagram or in Facebook, basically with the same um yeah, with the same name, you travel.me tours. So that's uh, that's how you can find us there and find your trip in just one city. Olga Not Bortnikova, yeah. Ivan Bortnikov, uh, co-founders of youtravel.me. Thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having us, Thank Robert. You. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LA Business Podcast. If you like what we're doing on this podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple or Google Play, leaving a five-star review, and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.